On to unit four. In the previous unit, we talked about perfect competition, which is a type of market structure which is efficient. It's the ideal type of market structure, but there's three types of imperfect competitions that are inefficient, create deadweight loss, or just simply bad, and we don't want them. The reason we have imperfect competition is because of those barriers to entry we talked about earlier. It's because of high financial costs, technological or innovation uh, preventions like patents and copyright, and the ownership of materials. Sometimes corporations own materials in the process to actually use those materials, so that can be a barrier to entry. There are three different imperfect competitions that we're going to talk about in this unit monopolistic competitive, monopolies, and oligopolies. Each of them will have their own characteristics. Monopolistic competition and monopolies will have their own graph that you'll need to memorize, but they all have their own characteristics and different levels of imperfection, if you were to say. So now first, let's talk about monopolies. A monopoly is simply when one firm controls an entire market and produces everything in the market. And the characteristics for a monopoly are one firm in the market. It's a completely unique product, so there's no close substitutes. It is because monopolies want it so that everyone needs to buy their product, that there's no other competition. So they have a unique product with no close substitutes, so they can have that, I, that control of the market. High barriers to entry so that no firms can actually enter the market. And this is, monopolies have the highest, highest barriers to entry, by the way. Monopolies are price makers. Since they're the only firm in the market, they can decide the price. They can determine whether to charge $10 or $5 or $4. For perfect competition, remember, firms were price takers. They took the market price. This is because there was millions of firms in the market. They had competition. But in a monopoly, they have no competition. So monopoly firms are price makers. And here's a graph for a monopoly. Notice demand and then notice marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is below demand. You still have marginal cost, which is like this, kind of like a Nike swoosh. Remember, this stays the same. It's Nike swoosh marginal cost. This is because of the law of diminishing marginal returns. And then the ATC is still V. But just remember from monopolies, demand curve, and then marginal revenue is below the demand curve. And make sure to remember the ATC and MC curve. Remember, profit maximizing still applies. There's MR equals MC. Also no, monopolies are inefficient, so they have deadweight loss in many situations. So just make sure you know that. It's still MR equals MC for profit maximizing. It doesn't change for market structures. If a company wants to maximize their profit, they go MR equals MC. So it would be here. So now there's also different type, there's a different type of monopoly called a natural monopoly. Sometimes some firms naturally take over because they have the lowest cost of production, so they naturally become a monopoly. It's when one firm can produce a socially optimal quantity at the lowest cost due to economic scale. So here's a graph for a natural monopoly. It's pretty similar, demand, margin, revenue. But notice ATC and MC, they're much more elongated like this. This is how you can identify a natural monopoly. It's much more elongated. MC doesn't necessarily look like a Nike swoosh, but rather just slowly decreases. This is because they have the lowest cost of production, so their marginal cost doesn't necessarily have that Nike swoosh look, but rather just elongated look. And because the marginal cost has this elongated look, average total cost, which determines, which is based on marginal cost, is also quite elongated like this. And this quantity here would be socially optimal. So make sure you remember this marginal cost and demand curve. This is socially optimal for a national monopoly. Now we have price discrimination. Price discrimination is charging the same product at different prices to individuals. So think how children pay less for haircuts or how children pay less for movie tickets. Just situations where we charge less for certain individuals. Like for car washes, sometimes elderly or military veterans get cheaper prices. This is because of price discrimination. We charge different prices per product. This is because companies want to maximize their producer surplus, and this is how you can actually do this. So let me explain. So in a situation where we don't have price discrimination, we have consumer surplus, producer surplus, deadweight loss. But with price discrimination, you can charge everyone the maximum amount they're actually willing to pay. So let's say a movie ticket for all individuals was $10. A child won't be able to actually pay $10, so they never actually go to the movie. But let's say that child could technically pay $8.
Then they allowed a price discrimination. They allowed an op option to have eight dollars. This makes it so that the child can actually pay for the movie ticket. That enhances the producer surplus. So just remember, price discrimination maximizes producer surplus. There's no consumer surplus in this situation. And make sure you remember pr price discrimination is just charging different rates of prices and maximize the producer surplus. In a price discrimination and on a graph like this, marginal revenue is equal to demand. So remember on monopolies, marginal revenue is less than demand. Well, when you charge everyone the maximum amount they're willing to pay, then marginal revenue equals the demand curve. So make sure you remember that. When you have a price discriminating monopoly, marginal revenue equals the demand curve. That is the main difference between a price discriminating and non-price discriminating monopolist. Price discrimination increases producer surplus, but also really maximizes it, so that's the maximum amount people are charged. Make sure you also remember price discrimination only happens with monopolies. You can only price discriminate when you have a monopoly in a market. So just make sure you know price discrimination is only really monopolies. Now it's time to cover monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition is a mix of perfect competition and monopolistic, and I'll explain it later. The characteristics are there's a large number of firms, not as many firms as perfect competition, but much more than monopolies. They all have differentiated products, so they're all different, pretty unique. There's some control over price. This is because there's like a decent amount of firms, so you have some control over price, not total control like monopolies, but not, like, but not no control like perfect competition. It's kind of a mix. Very low boat barriers to entry, but there are typically some barriers to entry. This is because there's a lot of firms, so a lot of firms are still able to enter, but it still prevents the majority of people. So just make sure you know there's some barriers to entry, but there's not a huge amount. And also make sure you know monopolistic competition involves lots of advertising because firms want to actually advertise and try to make their product more unique from their competition. And here's a graph from monopolistic competition. Here we see marginal costs, kind of like a Nike swoosh, ATC. Make sure you always remember MC and ATC. Demand and then marginal revenue, just like this. So it's very similar to monopoly. But a monopolistic competition graph changes from the short run and the long run. This is in the long run. In the long run, average total costs equals the profit maximizing point. So remember, profit maximizing MR equals MC, so at this point here but they would sell up here. So in the long run, make sure you remember that ATC kind of glides over the demand curve, kind of like this. This is because in the long run, firms enter the market for monopolistic competition, and there become so many firms that it becomes kind of like perfect competition where they don't make a normal profit. So make sure you remember ATC in the long run equals this demand curve. In the short run, however, ATC is actually less. So remember, in the short run, ATC is below the demand curve, kind of like that. And in the long run, ATC glides over the demand curve like that, so they make a normal profit. So in the short run, monopolistic competition firms make a more than a normal profit. They make excess profit. But in the long run, they make a normal profit, just like perfect competition. So now it's time to cover oligopolies. In my opinion, my favorite type of imperfect competition. It's a few firms. It's not like Monopoly where it's just one, but it's not like monopolistic competition where it's tons. It's less than 10 typically. There's either identical or differentiated products. There's very high at barriers to entry. They have, they're a price maker, so they can have control over prices. And what is different about oligopolies is that there's mutual interdependence, which means firms strategize with other firms in their market to maximize their own profit and their own actions. There is no graph for oligopoly, but you do need to understand game theory. Game theory is the study of how people behave strategically. In oligopolies, firms must act strategically for their own benefit, so we must use game theory for different questions based on oligopolies. So for a question with game theory, you're going to have two different firms, but in this situation, you have two prisoners, right? And you have two different actions they can do, confess or deny to their crime, confess and deny to their crime. And you see the different results for both prisoners. For prisoner A, if they confess and disconfess, they get five years. If prisoner A denies and prisoner B confesses, you get 10 years, etc. Game theory shows 
how we can actually analyze this situation, what is the best case scenario for both, and what would actually happen. So let's actually look at this. In this situation, what would prisoner A do? Would they confess or deny? And let's look at actually the confess and deny. So if prisoner A were to confess, they would either get five years or one year based on prisoner B response. But if they were to deny, they would get 10 years and two years if prisoner B confesses or denies. You get what I mean here. Prisoner A gets less years if they confess than if they deny, no matter what prisoner B does. So prisoner A, no matter what, should confess. So if prisoner B knows that prisoner A confesses because it's their best case scenario, what would prisoner B do? Prisoner B would try to find the situation that lessens their time. So it's either 10 years if they deny or 5 years if they confess. Obviously, you want 5 years, so both prisoner A and prisoner B in this situation would confess. What prisoner A had here, what prisoner A had, was a dominant strategy. It's a strategy where you know for certain that you want to actually have one action. A dominant strategy is when you have less of a, when you have an overall benefit. So for prisoner A, if they confessed, no matter what, they got less years. That's what a dominant strategy is. There is also an idea of Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is where one prisoner will make the optimal decision based on the other de prisoner's decision. So that's kind of what prisoner B did here. They noticed that prisoner A should confess in every situation, so they themselves confessed because that would be their less years. So their Nash equilibrium would be confess and confess. That's their least, that's their worst, that's their best case scenario for both of them. So now we should probably cover and make sure you remember all these different types of market structures because it can be sometimes confusing. So for perfect competition, remember it's identical products, no advantage, it's the ideal situation, it's the best case situation, it's the ideal efficient situation, price taker, not necessarily thousands of firms, it can, it's just a lot of firms. Monopolistic competition is a mix of monopolies and perfect competition. Make sure you remember there's advertising, differentiated products. There's hundreds of firms, less firms than perfect competition, but more firms than monopolies. For monopolies, there are unique goods, price discrimination happens in monopolies. There's only one firm. Make sure you remember all the similarities like monopolistic competition, perfect competition, price equals ATC. No long-run profit, like we saw in the long-run monopolistic competition graph. And we have low barriers to entry in both. Here we have, for monopoly and oligopolies, we have high barriers to entry. Remember, oligopoly use game theory, collusion. There's 10 or less. And make sure you remember, for all of these firms, MR equals MC for profit maximizing to shutdown point. MC and ATC are the exact same. You should always graph MC and ATC. MC is like a Nike swoosh, ATC is kind of like a V, and there's still a motivation for profit. So it's a lot to memorize, but with certain question types, you're gonna be, make, you're gonna understand these much more. So I recommend you go to the description and answer some questions with these. Now let's also try to remember all the graphs. So for perfect competition, remember the firm is just supply and demand. I'm sorry, the market is just supply and demand. So make sure you just understand that. Some AP questions will require you to graph the market and the firm for a perfect competition. For a, a question like that, make sure you remember market is just supply and demand. The firm is just marginal cost, ATC, and then remember demand equals marginal revenue and it's constant like this because there's so many firms in a perfect competition that demand is constant for a product. So always remember ATC kind of glides over the marginal revenue equals demand curve because there's a normal profit, they're not making excess money. And then remember MC is like a swoosh, profit maximizing MC equals MR equals demand monopolistic competition. Remember, marginal revenue equals demand. ATC glides over in the long run and short run. ATC is actually below the demand curve. Make sure you remember that. For monopoly, it's pretty similar. Marginal revenue below demand curve. ATC, MC, but notice how they're making a profit here. That's because monopolies make more than a normal profit. They make excess profit. So make sure you remember that. Natural monopolies kind of have this elongated look at this point, they're making socially optimal. So make sure you can notice all of these. And then remember for oligopolies, you wanna make sure you use game theory. Remember there's still barriers to entry. There's less than 10 firms. Make sure you cover and make sure you understand all of these different firms. 
I feel like it's best to understand all of their similarities and how they work. Make sure you memorize the graphs, and you should be good for this unit.